Good morning. Glad you're here. Thank you for being a part of this venue here today. Uh, for those of you worshiping in the commons, glad you're a part of us as well. And to Millard, uh, welcome. You know, some people have said uh, how many venues. We have three video venues now. Three, right? And you found out last weekend we got a video venue in this room. And uh, that'll happen uh, more often than you will uh, probably want, but it will happen. Um, some people are like, where were you last week? And I, was, I spoke live in Millard. So 8 o'clock I spoke live here. We recorded it and showed it to you guys and to the commons, and so that's going to happen more often. And we just want you to know that uh, um, if you want to if you want to have uh, teaching live, the only place that was guaranteed is eight o'clock. <laughs> and you're like, it's not that worth it, is it? It's just not. It's not worth it. So, um, but uh, we we love. I had a great time at Miller last weekend. Our Miller campus is doing great. And we're super thrilled that that is open. And if you live in the Millard area, 144th and Q, that's where our new location is. And it is a great place to be a part of. And so if you're thinking about that, um, uh, we'd love to have you join us there as well. Uh, in the story, The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen, the mother duck discovers that one of her ducklings is not like the other. It's large and not cute and awkward and makes weird sounding noises that are not what she is used to, the other ducklings begin to pick on the ugly duckling. The ugly duckling decides it would be better for everyone if he left. One day he sees some majestic birds flying overhead. They're incredible and gorgeous and he follows them. They land on a lake, and he does too. And in that lake, he sees his reflection. The ugly duckling realizes that it is his reflection that is looking back at him, and he is a beautiful swan. He had no idea who he truly was. Today, we're going to find out who we truly are. I hope that we discover our true identity. For the last several weeks, we've been taking a look at how do we find our way back to God? We have these awakenings in us, uh, to, the desire to be loved and to love, uh, to find meaning and purpose in our lives. And oftentimes those God-given desires lead us away from him. We look for love in all the wrong places. We look for meaning and purpose in, in all kinds of different avenues. And eventually it, we find ourselves a long ways from from God, we didn't even intend to go there, but we ended up there. Some of us intended, right? As soon as we could, we left home and we left faith and we left everything and decided to go our own way and do our own thing and found ourselves far from God. For some, we decided to return home. Last weekend, we took a look at that. We turned around, we came back home and found our way there. Finding our way back to God has been a life-changing moment. But it's also kind of a process. Just because we are home doesn't mean that, we, that, that we, we feel at home quite yet. Like this boy in our story, Luke 15, is uh, where we learn about the prodigal son. Luke 15, 21 through 24 is where we're going to look at today. His son said to him, to his dad, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. We looked at that last week, and, and that is a true statement. I am no longer worthy, right? He wasn't. He had messed up big time, blew all the money he had and been given by his dad. He had told his dad he wished his dad was dead. And uh, so his dad gives him this inheritance. It's more money than he can imagine and it's probably more money than he ever thought he could spend. You know, sometimes when you, you know, somebody hits the lottery and, and you know, it's millions and millions or a football player signs a massive contract, guaranteed millions of dollars, the thought is there's no way they can blow through that money. There's no way they could ever spend. And in fact, you probably have even thought, you know, if I could do, if I won 50 some mil, you know, here's how I do it. And I'd spend a million on this million on this. And you're thinking, there's no way I could ever spend $50 million in my lifetime. Now, some of you think, well, I could, yes, I probably could. That would be easy for me. I mean, you know, and all of a sudden, because she's like, well, I'd give it to this and, this and this and this and this and this. And I'd spend, and all of us, and, and it would just be gone. 
Well, this boy's money's gone, and he knows he is no longer worthy, right, to be called your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life, lost and found. And my favorite phrase of the entire story. So the party began. What a great, and we're going to look at that one uh, next weekend. I have sinned against you and against heaven. I don't even know if the father heard those words, to tell you the truth. I mean, he blows right past him. I suppose for his dad, it was a very difficult time when his boy was gone. There had been rumors, you know, and probably people talking in the, in the community, maybe even at church. And so how's your youngest boy doing? That would be a phrase he did not want to deal with, right? You come to church like, how's he doing? I haven't seen him for a while. What's he up to? Uh, well, I don't know. I heard he's working for a pig farmer. That true? That can't be true. Uh, we've, got, we've heard the same thing. Well, it must be hard on you. Um, yeah. Yeah, we just hope he comes home. I don't deserve. Maybe you even feel that way today. Even at church, you feel like, I don't deserve his love. I don't feel his grace. I don't deserve his attention. And uh, shame and regret have filled your heart. And you even listen to some of those little voices in your head that say, who are you, th- who do you think you are? Who are you, you're not kidding anybody. Nobody is fooled by this. You shouldn't probably even be here. Why would you even think that God would love you after all the things that you've done, all the things that you've said, all the things you've been a part of, how in the world, why in the world would you even think you should be allowed in the building? I'm no longer worthy. So he says to the servants, bring the best robe, bring a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And immediately the servants run and fetch the required items. The servants don't question. They don't, you know, they're not, that's not what they do. They're not here to say, "Uh, maybe that's not a good idea. You know, they're not going to like, you know, uh, do you know that if you give him a ring, he can go buy whatever he wants now? None, there's nobody's questioning anything. At this moment, they're just running and getting. Bring the best robe, which would have been what? It would have been his dad's robe. The best robe was dad's robe. And this is not a bathrobe, like, right? It's like, hey, it's nice and warm. It's nice. It is a royal robe. It's the king's robe, right? It's only dad wears this robe. It's royalty and authority. Imagine putting it on. I'm sure it was the only time unless he snuck into the closet one time and put it on and looked around like, what? This is awesome. You know, that now he's, he's like, what? And it smells like his dad. And it surrounds him. You know, there's certain smells when you go home, right? It's like when you go back home and your mom's cooking like cookie or whatever, or maybe it's just some bad aftershave. I don't know what it is. But, you know, there's certain things that you like, this smells like my dad. This smells like my home. That's the smell now that this boy is enjoying. The robe would have re- represented the family honor. The ring re- represents the authority and the symbol and the power of the name of his father. It was kind of the transferring of uh, credit, really, uh, the ring would have been a seal for any transaction that would have been required. It's, again, it's kind of like giving him the credit card, which seems so stupid, right? Here the guy blows through all the money, you know, and now you're giving him the gold card? It, does anybody think this is stupid? Does anybody like, eh, that's probably not. How, what's the limit on that? <sighs> you sure you, sir, 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 uh, I don't now again, we don't. Hear, I don't know. We don't know if this dad is married, but I'm thinking in the background, something like, mm, "Not a good idea. Not a good idea." The accountant is going, "Not a good idea. Don't bring the. Don't. Oh, don't give him the ring." We've talked about this. We talked about this. We talked about this. 
But now this boy knows that he will never grow hungry. He will never know. He will never have, not have a place to lay his head. He will always have clothes. He will always have everything he needs. Everything. Because he's got the ring. Bring some sandals, which is incredible, right? To think about that this incredibly wealthy boy, right? He has massive amounts of wealth. Doesn't even have shoes now. He is so poor that he does not have shoes. And the only people who don't have shoes in his house are the servants. The servants don't have shoes because shoes were a sign of wealth, also a sign of freedom. Slaves didn't wear shoes. Family members wore the shoes. Bring some shoes because this is my son. So he has a robe and he has a ring and he has some shoes. He's no longer a stranger. He's not a hired hand. He's not a loser. He is a son in the family. That's his identity. We are also, all of us are prodigals at some point. We've lived under the shadow of maybe some guilt and shame perhaps a little bit of excess living, regrets from a long time ago. For some of us, some of the regrets that we have are from, you know, and yet we still can remember the moment, we can remember the feeling, we can remember the after effects of those sins. And we still think at times, uh, I don't deserve grace at all. And if we can muster up enough the courage to sing amazing grace, right? Because we know we, are, we don't deserve any of this. How could he love me now? Too many times you've cried at, this, at a service or at a, you know, at a song when you were realizing how good your father truly is. Brennan Manning wrote this, define yourself radically as one beloved by God. So define yourself radically as one beloved by God. This is the true self. Every other identity is an illusion. God's love for you and his choice of you constitute your wealth and worth. Accept that and let it become the most important thing in your life. Your true identity is that the God, the Father, loves you unconditionally. We've been praying this prayer for several weeks now. God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. I hope you've been praying that. Today, we pray it like this. God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. Awaken in me the awareness that that I am your unconditionally loved child. I am your unconditionally loved child. Remember the robe? You now wear it. You wear his robe. You don't need to prove anything anymore. Any, you're not proving his, you know. You have his robe. You have his ring. You don't have to worry anymore. All your needs are taken care of. Honor is restored and hope is given The sandals, you wear them. You are not a slave. Before you came home, you were a slave. You were a slave to sin. The Bible says, before I become a follower of Jesus, I am controlled. I am a slave to sin. That's why we continue to do the same stupid stuff over and over again, because we can't help ourselves. We're not strong enough. We're powerless to overcome. And after I find Christ, I put on those sandals which means I am no longer a slave to sin. And I don't have to. It was an amazing revelation to me before, right? Before, right? I had to. I was controlled by. I wanted to. And after I followed Jesus, I don't have to anymore. Greater is he that is in me than the temptations of the world that are around me. I want to remind you of some things. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. New life has begun. Your past is in your past. You need to leave it there. You're a new creation. You're at home. 
Ephesians 1, 7, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom. Why? Because we were a slave. He purchased our freedom, gave us some sandals, and that was purchased with what? The blood of his son. That's the cost for your sandals. That's how much they cost. And he forgave our sins, Romans 8, 1. So now there is no condemnation, right? I am no longer worthy. There is now no condemnation. What? But I don't feel worthy. That's right, you don't. You are not worthy, but there is now no condemnation. I don't, right? I, the father doesn't hold this against the son. That's the amazing thing. Otherwise, he does not give him the ring. He doesn't give him the ring. I will hold this back from you. Because you and I both know you're not worthy. And for a little while, I'm going to see if you are worthy of the ring. You're going to have to prove to me that you can handle this. It's amazing that he doesn't do that. Right? How crazy... Well, we'll see if you're worthy of the card once more. But, you know, last time I sent you to the store, you bought a, and they didn't tell me, and you racked up, and what, why did you buy, and this is crazy. There's no, no condemnation. Romans 8, 39, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. His love will reach out to you no matter where you're at. Galatians 3.26, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are my son. You're not a slave. You're the son. I love what happens in this story. The dad says, bring the fatted calf. Let's have a feast. This son of mine was dead. He's alive again. He's lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. And dad throws a party. It's the biggest party of the year. It's an incredible event. Lots of music and laughter and uh, food and drink. Everything's happy. Everybody's happy. Well, there's not everybody, but we'll look at that next weekend. Next weekend, we'll find out. Not everybody's happy when you throw a party for the lost who get found. Everybody needs to be here for next weekend because oftentimes when we stay in the home for a while and the lost get found, someone's like, why, you know, like, why are we getting excited? And we forget why we're excited about the lost, right? So here we go next weekend. This son was dead. He had no relationship, no communication, just separation. And now it's celebration because he's home. When our oldest son, Justin, was in the army, he was deployed to Afghanistan it was during some pretty rough combat stuff going on. He was, he was in a little province called Helmand Province in southern Afghanistan. You may know of Helmand Province as the birthplace of the Taliban. And we just sent 500 soldiers there. Um, because we're losing that. We had very little contact with Justin during that time. He had no internet, no co- communication with us while he was at his forward operating post and so he was uh, 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 oftentimes we, we might hear him from every couple of weeks um, when he was at a different uh, post and so that was when I decided to buy a uh, cell phone so in case he could get to a phone he would call he, I, would, I told him I would take, I'll take your call anytime just call anytime just let us know and, and so oftentimes he would call us at ridiculous times but it was fine I just wanted to know he was okay and he didn't tell us a whole lot about what was going on, but uh, I was just really glad uh, to be able to talk to him. Well, uh, when he returned from deployment, we went to New York uh, to Fort Drum, where he was a part of the 10th Mountain Division. And uh, we wanted to be a part of the ceremony for when he came home, and we wanted to see him. So, um, uh, again, the Army just kind of tells you, you know, here's when it's going to happen, and we, get, we got little updates and then all of a sudden they say, it's not going to happen here, it's going to happen here. So that meant 3 o'clock in the morning, which meant we need to get up and be on post before that. And so, you know, you're, everybody's checking. Well, you go into this massive room because this whole troop's coming home, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people at this thing, and it's just incredible. And, they, and, then, the, and then the soldiers come in. 
and uh, we're scanning the whole place. We have no idea where he's at. We don't, you know, and during the whole ceremony, we never did see him. And we were wondering, did he show, did he, you know, because it's like him not to show up for some things. And so you're just like, where is he at? And literally, you know, people are hugging their, their soldiers and we're like, where's he at? And then all of a sudden he grabs his mom from behind. He had snuck up behind us. And, um, and it was incredible. It was, he was home, right? He was home. And I look, you know, he says, dad, I'm sorry. It was, you know, three o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, you know, this, by the way, it is the best day of my life. And he kind of looked at me and says, I said, this is in the top, like, three. Like, you, you know, right? Because you're home. And nothing, and, and then we just stayed up. We went and celebrated, got some great breakfast and had a blast. And, and it was super powerful. Um, if you're finding your way back to God, um, you got to know this that he will throw a massive party in your honor. Even though you may have been incredibly far from him, now is the, he will throw a massive party. Romans 6, 4 says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Now that little word baptism is we're we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. For many of you, baptism was that moment when you came home. You decided to turn your life around and give your life to him. And baptism rep represents that dying of an old life, right? That life that was far from God. I'm going to die to that life. I'm not going to go be a part of that anymore. That reckless and that ridiculous and that careless and that selfish life is gone right it's gone i'm not going to do that anymore i'm not going to feed the pigs anymore i'm not going to put myself in a, right so that's a dying and so here at our baptistry you would see you'll see people lowered right dying and and we've said this if we hold you under long enough you will die <laughs> you will because it's a grave. You can't breathe. So take a deep breath. But for that moment, right, you're dead and then raised up. It's an incredibly beautiful. And then you what? Sometimes it's cold. And so, right? And so there's that moment of a deep breath that really, Perhaps you're finding your way back to God and somebody's invited you to join with you, you know, today and this prodigal son story is your story. You've had a lot of regrets and you've had a lot of missteps along the way and you're wondering, is it possible that my sins could be completely wiped out as if they never happened? Yes, you can go public today with that decision. Make a commitment and you can be baptized today. We're gonna give you an opportunity to do that today if you would like to be baptized. And, um, we don't always offer an invitation like this at our services. We're going to offer them at every single service. In the commons, there is a pastor there that will help navigate you with, through this as well. And, and at Millard, Theo will talk you through this. And uh, if you want to be baptized at any of our venues today, you can be baptized, right? And uh, we're going to sing and we're going to give you opportunity to do that. But for a second, um, and someone's like, whoa, really? And like, yeah, you can do this. And we have shorts and shirts and people to help you with that today. And so we're going to give you plenty of time. And now you were thinking, oh, I wasn't really prepared. I, I totally get that. Um, and and you, you've probably, you can use that as an excuse. You certainly can stay as where you're at. You can stay there. Um, but... Um, we're trying to make this as easy as possible today for you. And so if you will take that first step, that's, all, that's, the, that's really the only one you will think about is the first step. The second one will be a lot easier. And I remember that very moment in my life when that happened. As if it was yesterday. 
I was so scared and I was so nervous. And I don't even know why I did it that day. I have no idea because at our church, every weekend they would sing a song called the Hymn of Invitation and, and most of the time nobody came. And, and I don't even know why I decided to do it that day. I've been thinking about it, but I had never really made a decision and I didn't even know. I, and all of a sudden I am in the aisle walking forward and I was baptized into Christ. It was just, it was that simple. And I never looked back. I'd never have looked back. So um, we're going to have communion together right now. And, uh, and, and this is a moment in which we're going to look, right, and uh, add the, there's some trays that are going to be passed. There's a, a little thing of bread and, a little, and some juice there. But what I want you to look at, this is how I want you to look at it today. I want you to look at it and see what is reflected back to you. See it as a, a pond. And what do you see in the reflection? Is it an ugly duckling filled with shame and regret? Or could it be what is being reflected back to you is Jesus himself? Why? Because you are now in Christ. It is his reflection that shines back at you. When you look at yourself, you are seeing him. You are not seeing a, 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 a slave or a loser or a, 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 a sinner. You are no longer described and defined by your past sins. Because every one of us will... And we, would all, we could all list sins that were, if truth be known, if we're found out, if this happens. So you, what you get to look back, right, is the reflection of an incredible new creation. And after we have communion, we're going to have a chance to respond. And I want you to think about it. If you need to uh, respond to Jesus today, I'll come back up here and we'll talk through it, all right? Father God, oh, actually, wait a minute, wait, sorry. We had, um, we're going to ask you to, to stay with us the whole time, right? Stay with us, don't leave. Um, we had people leave the first hour, it was super weird, so I don't know what happened there, and I, you know, but, but we're not going to open the doors, you just kind of hang with us, we get out on time, we will get out on time, right? So stay with me. God, thank you so much right now for this moment. Thank you for reflecting back at, to us your uh, incredible son. As we look into his eyes today, we see the amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen.